you need a piece of drawing paper. And if you're using a bumpy surface, you want to make sure that you have uh, something under it so that the texture of the table doesn't come through. And all I want you to do, this shouldn't take you very long, in your sketchbook, I want you to draw several strips, kind of like if you were in a tracer ruler, which is actually a, a good tip. By the way, you could trace a ruler to quickly get these strips drawn. We're just going about one inch wide, well, sorry, one inch high, and a good eight inches wide at least. You're going to do several of those. Just fill the page. All right, and then we're going to make about roughly one inch squares. This does not have to be perfect or pretty. All right, this is one time where I'm not going to judge you off of your craftsmanship per se. Okay, What I'm going to be looking for is the shading and blending technique. I don't care if the lines are a little sloppy and not perfect. It'll be okay. Okay, the whole point with a value strip is to practice going from lightest to darkest or darkest to lightest, whichever you prefer. I prefer to start really light and move up gradually to darker. And the first thing I want you to work on is shading. We're going to skip the first square. We'll, we'll skip that for a second. I want you to shade at an angle. Okay, so you're not going to draw on the tip of your pencil like this, okay, because then you get scratchy lines that are hard to blend. You're going to turn it to the side so that you kind of wear down the edge of the pencil tip a little bit. And then the whole idea here is to touch the paper very, very lightly. And then you are layering the strokes, not necessarily beside each other, but more like overlapping, which takes some time and some patience here. All right, so practice a little bit on the side of the paper first and you can go over certain areas again. You're trying to get a very, very flat kind of even look there. So I'm going to go ahead right here and try and fill in this square just like that. You can go outside the lines, that's okay. The only thing I'm looking for for this exercise is very gradual, even strokes. Trying to get as light of a touch as you can. And I didn't even pay attention to what pencil I used. Oh, it's a 2B. That's good. Okay, because you will um, get lighter marks out of a 2B than you will out of your 4 or your 6. Okay, so start with the 2. I should have mentioned that. All right, next box over, you're gonna try the same thing, which you're gonna just add a little bit more pressure. Just enough so that it's just one step darker than the first one you did. And you notice this, can't, this process can't be rushed. Okay, you gotta move nice and slow, trying to keep that pressure the same. Okay, now, I don't feel like that's quite dark enough, so I'm going to go over it again. And I might have to do that a few times until I build up a value that I feel is a good representation of what one step darker from this one should look like. Alright, and then we're going to do that again. We're going to keep on moving. Now. With a lot of care and time, you can get a very soft blending style from this technique. It is one of the most time consuming techniques, but we're going to work on it, okay? Because when we start shading and blending things like uh, spheres and skin tones, you need a nice, light, delicate touch with this. Uh, what I see a lot is people getting really kind of sloppy and doing. I've even seen this kind of stuff. I've seen the really crazy sloppy scribbles. 
and then like, okay, I wanna make that darker, I'll go this direction. All right, this is not shading. This is not blending. <laughs> this is a scratchy mess, okay? I don't wanna see that. I also do not wanna see this kind of stuff where you're doing great in one area and then you decide, oh, I'm gonna get sloppy, let's speed this thing up. And I'll go back over it. Okay. Even if you do that neatly and you stay kind of in the box, I see people doing this kind of stuff. Even if you stay more in the box, that is still not what I'm looking for, okay? You're gonna build up your layers gradually, and yes, we can get really, really dark. I'll prove it over here. Okay, you're gonna take your 6B, and even though I'm going to make this as black and as deep of dark color as I can shade, not color, shade, as I can get, I'm not, I'm going to resist the temptation to just go in and start doing that, okay? Because I want the technique to look smooth and refined and match the style that I was working on over here. All right, so again, I'm going to start out with a fairly moderate, medium touch, carefully overlapping all those strokes so that we don't see any streaks. Then I'll go back over and keep building the value until I've gotten rid of all of the white flecks of paper still showing through from the texture of the paper. I'm just going to keep on building this. until I'm happy with a nice, smooth, flat finish. All right, and you can see that as I get further down over here, I've gotten rid of all the paper texture and it's starting to look a little slick. Okay, but even if I turn that at an angle, maybe hopefully the camera will pick this up a little bit and you can sort of see the glare on the paper. Are you seeing that glare? I hope so. You're not seeing scratch marks. Okay, if I had stayed more on the tip or if I'd pressed really, really hard and instead of building the layers, just went for it and just started doing this. Okay, yes, that covers ground faster. Okay, and it gets a darker, flatter tone a little more quickly, but look what happened. Now, when the light hits it, you see all these scratchy texture marks. I'm trying to bend the paper so you can see that. I hope this is working on the camera. You're just gonna have to trust me if you can't see it. There's a nice flat professional feel here. There's a very scratchy uh, amateur feel to this one. All right, now I can change even the direction that I'm shading and we can turn it this way. You can turn the whole paper and shade that angle, okay? And if you continue to build up those layers gradually and softly, you will not get the crazy scratching and shiny uh, look that you, that's happening with this one. All right, the example that I have posted on Google Sites, and I might have um, given you a printout, or if I haven't, I probably will, and it's also on the slide presentation, shows you a bunch of different ways to do shading and blending. I don't want you to worry so much about all those other different ways right now. I want you to master this one first, okay? And the goal this week is going to be to go from, get my, oh, that's a 4B, get the 2B again, to go from the lightest value and build it up to the darkest. And yes, you may switch back and forth between your different pencils. Uh, 2B will be the lightest. It's the hardest pencil. Uh, which means you need a little bit lighter touch when using it because it can carve into the paper more. Uh, 4B is a little bit softer and darker, and then 6B is your softest and darkest pencil yet. can almost have a little bit more of a look of like charcoal. So you're going to use those three. You start with the 2B, somewhere around here you switch to the 4B, and then if you need to, you switch to the 6B as you move on up. 
a little bit more advanced technique once you get comfortable with this would be to get those junctions here to disappear all right so it will look something like I'll find the 2b again it will look something like this I want and I expect this from my art 2 and beyond students to get those transitions between the different values to be seamless okay where you can't really tell sort of one where one area starts and this next one stops okay like there's a line right there ideally I don't want that line okay you want to be able to lightly blend and build these values up so that there is a gradual transition and you're not seeing the hard outline between every inch okay and again stay on the edge of your pencil not up on the tip if I switch to the tip I'm not going to cover as much ground it's going to be much harder to control it's going to want to create these scratchier, skinnier lines that are going to be a little more frustrating to work with. Okay, so I want to see at least three or four of these done this style. Okay, not, I don't want to see all this crazy sloppiness. Okay, put a little time and effort into this. You will thank me later because it's going to dramatically improve your shading and blending abilities when we start drawing more.